me put from Lyon University. Let me, okay, let me uh, start the seminar. So our speaker is Thomas Strebel from the Lyon University. He will talk about marital equivalence of single Riemannian foliations and IPOS on geometry. All words will be explained, right? So yes, you're welcome. So thank you for, for the kind invitation. Um, so this is joint work with uh, Hadi Nahari, who is also here, a uh, promising young uh, researcher. And uh, the plan of the talk is that I first explain what singular affiliations are, <clears throat> and then uh, how it is modified or extended to include uh, singular Riemannian affiliations. By the way, Alexei, I don't mind seeing you. Yes. <laughs> it, by the way, in general, I mean, if people keep the, the videos on, I think it's, it's, it's slightly nicer because I have these black spots there instead. Uh, it's, it's nice to see some faces, <laughs> even this time. But I'll be drinking coffee if it doesn't yeah, make it I, Look, I have one here. Okay, uh, then it's fine. The funny story about this one is that I even took it from the coffee place to bring it here because I was a bit late and I asked them if I can bring it back tomorrow. <laughs> so, yes, so uh, first I would explain these two notions <coughs> and uh, give some facts about it and so on. Then uh, I will define the Morita equivalence of them uh, where uh, we will follow um, the one which was defined for singular foliations before and to say how to extend it on singular Riemannian foliations. Then I will introduce uh, some apparently different subject, namely I for so many folds. One could also say singular constraint systems or singular co-isotropic sub mm, many folds is a bit strange for singular spaces. Um, I, I decided for I Poisson where I is um, an ideal. Um, so it is in the very same spirit as singular foliations, but just the, kind of the same thing for uh, constraint systems. And uh, then in the last part, we will use this, uh, this category uh, to in, in applying it to, to, the, to, the, to the first two subjects we had. Okay. Ah, I need to move here. So first about singular foliations, and I start with the regular ones. So a regular foliation is just uh, like as you see it here, and we know that by Frobenius theorem, uh, it corresponds to a distribution or a sub bundle of tangent bundle, which is involutive in this sense. Okay, that's just the same thing. Um, now, if one drops, I mean, gamma of D, these are particular vector fields, uh, they are a module of uh, a sub module of all the vector fields. And if one drops that this has constant rank, one essentially comes up with the definition for a single affiliation, which in modern terms is viewed as a locally finitely generated, that's a very important addition which one needs here, locally finitely generated C infinity of M module of the vector fields, which is involutive. So that, that is the definition of um, a single affiliation. I should say that uh, written as such, one can also replace C infinity of M by uh, real analytic or holomorphic uh, if one works on different type of categories. And that's an important thing. There was another uh, definition even before where uh, compactly supported was used, which is equivalent to this one as given here. One can just drop it, but uh, which then doesn't permit these extensions to holomorphic and, and real analytic. So if the dimension of uh, the, uh, the subspace of TM at each point, which you obtain by evaluating this module at a point is independent of the point X and M, then this is just the same as a regular foliation. But even if not, um, the main point is that you get um, uh, a geometric singular foliation. I abbreviated with a G in front, by uh, every single affiliation or module single affiliation because it's defined in terms of modules uh, due to a, a theorem of, of Hermann. 
Uh, and this is the main point. So traditionally, one might, may have wanted to start with this one, but uh, it, it seems more interesting to uh, to look at, uh, at it in, 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 the, in, this, in this sense I just mentioned. And um, here it's important to observe that this notion of a similar correlation contains more information than just its leaf decomposition of the manifold. To um, explain this, uh, look at the example of vector fields in R2, which vanish to some order k at the origin. Evidently, this k will be an invariant uh, of this, um, I mean, up to isomorphisms of these um, uh, singular foliations. And they uh, still have the same leaf space, namely just two leaves, the, the origin and the rest, right? So um, this is an example that one does have more information. Uh, and uh, since this is also a, 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 a seminar about uh, cohomology, I, I'm, I could not refrain from mentioning that um, similar foliations with some slight extra uh, conditions, namely now it's not, um, so that's why I read essentially, it's not locally finitely generated, it's really gen finitely generated. And uh, it is uh, either real analytic or holomorphic, or it um, has real analytic generators locally, or it has a resolution as a module of vector fields, then there exists uh, a universally infinity algebra, which one can also view as a Q manifold. So there's this cohomology there. Um, uh, and this is, um, this is unique up to homotopy. So that's why it's called universal. So for every, essentially every uh, single affiliation, there is an infinity algebra, a Q manifold positively or non-negatively graded, the N is for N for the positive numbers. Um, and it's degrading, uh, th th this, these are in bijections. And in this way, one obtains uh, some algebraic um, data associated to singular leaves. So every uh, regular leaf um, is, um, has just no such data, but the singular one can have. And for example, this K, which I mentioned above, would be part of such data, okay? that uh, we will also see <clears throat> later for this um, Morita equivalence and this Ipersson category that there's a similar algebraic invariant which we construct. So this was, I, I will not talk about this theorem, but uh, this is still like worth mentioning at all. So now let us add a, a Riemannian metric into the game. So let MG be a Riemannian manifold and uh, let SF uh, be given on a Riemannian manifold, then we call it a singular Riemannian foliation in the module sense, if the following condition holds true. So for all vector fields in the uh, singular foliation, F, we have that the lead derivative of the metric lies inside some particular space. So here's just one forms. This is the notation for a, a symmetric uh, tensor product because certainly the lead derivative of a symmetric tensor field remains symmetric. And here's G flat of this single affiliation. So G flat, I, I just recall here, is the contraction of the vector field with uh, the metric. So it's a musical isomorphism. So that is the uh, condition we, we postulate. Um, I make a remark. Suppose, I mean, I, I look for, like, I, I look at the behavior of the metric with respect to a lead derivative. Uh, uh, uh. Question? Was there a question or no? Okay. Uh, if I make a lead derivative of a metric along um, a, a vector field and I multiply the vector field by function, evidently it's not infinity linear. This would be this first term, but one picks up another term and it, it, it motivates a bit uh, this form here. In particular, if one looks at um, F being generated by killing vectors, then this first term would be zero. And um, you would, uh, you, you just pick up precisely such type of terms. So this is one form and this is G flat of V where V then now is in, inside this single affiliation. If you start with V in the single affiliation. So this, uh, this, sh this also shows and proves that uh, any, um, any C infinity 
uh, module F uh, generated by the killing vectors. Be careful, this is not a uh, finite dimensional vector space now, it's a module and uh, its elements are not killing vector vectors, they're just generating it. Uh, gives an example of a singular Riemannian foliation. Uh, and another example, which is uh, somewhat different uh, in the spirit and on the other end is a Riemannian submersion. Suppose you have uh, a manifold MG and uh, it projects to N, uh, GN with a metric uh, GN on N uh, in such a way that pi is a submersion and if you look at vertical vector, I mean, at, at, sorry, at horizontal vector fields, horizontal vector fields of such a bundle would be um, vector fields which are orthogonal to the fibers. At each point, they are isomorphic, they are isometric to their projection uh, on the base. So they have the same length. So this one, this one, this one, they all have the same length. So that essentially one can say that the transversal uh, metric, uh, to, transversal beliefs is determined by, uh, by this uh, Riemannian submersions, whereas, uh, or by, by, by this notion, whereas the, the metric along the leaves uh, is, is, is arbitrary in contrast to, to killing vectors where along the leaves you need to, um, you, you need invariance. So here you don't need invariance along the leaves, you just need invariance um, uh, trans, uh, transversal, but transversal in this precise sense. Okay, so that's the second example. Now, um, <clears throat> there's also um, a, a standard notion, like, like books written about a singular Riemannian foliations, like by Molino, uh, I would like to call it geometric singular uh, foliation. And um, now certainly we need to discuss first what kind of singular foliation is. So I stick to the singular foliations we had before. So this module version um, and say uh, it's geometric singular foliation should satisfy the following thing, namely that every geodesic, which is uh, orthogonal to one leaf of the foliation uh, stays uh, orthogonal to it uh, along uh, the leaf. So, so if it's, if it's, if it's, let's say like this, if it's uh, orthogonal to one point, at one point to a leaf, it's orthogonal to, at all points, to all leaves at, through that point. Typical example would be as, as follows, take uh, R2, take the standard metric, and uh, now the geodesics in R2 are just uh, straight lines, and you see that um, uh, a geodesic, a straight line, which is orthogonal to, um, the the uh, the single affiliation given by these concentric orbits, they uh, stay always orthogonal. So that's like the, the baby example. Uh, this is one which comes from um, a, a killing symmetry, certainly, but the, the, the definition now is is significantly more general. So it's 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 uh, one could ask why does one not try to make sense of this transversal invariant in another way. Um, locally, it would make sense, but globally there can be issues because these, these leaves can wind around in a tricky way and so on. So it is um, more complicated to formulate this um, uh, transversal invariance. Where, while this, however, is, 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 is the same in the same spirit. So that, that is the definition. Are, are there any questions up to now? I mean, some people heard it already, so, but, um, okay. So now there is um, the statement that any module singular Riemannian foliation uh, uh, it gives a, a geometric singular Riemannian foliation. So with Alexei, we didn't precisely have that defi those definitions I gave now, but in the spirit, that is what we had. Uh, it's equivalent in, in, or almost equivalent to what we had. And, the, the, the I think we had this in the paper about gauging without symmetry, right? I think it was yeah, and we, we had like we had actually finitely generated because we, we wanted vector bundles, not locally finitely generated, and we had a yeah. different condition there. But it, I mean, okay, so in spirit, it's the same. So uh, I, I ascribe this uh, to our old work, although we worked with Hardy like to to improve all this. But um, what we will see below is that this. Um, so, so while we proved this theorem with, with Alexei in 2019, 
uh, or slightly before, but the paper from 2019, um, the, 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 the perspective I will uh, explain below gives an almost tautological proof, which is very elegant. So I, I want to uh, end my talk more or less with this proof. Uh, and I will show it afterwards when after ex explaining what hyperson geometry would be. Now there's still uh, like an important question. What about the reverse direction? Uh, does a geometric similar Riemannian foliation uh, imply that one has a module similar Riemannian foliation? And there are evidently two versions of this question. So the first one, so in each case, you're given a geometric similar Riemannian foliation. And now you can say that whatever is the module singular foliation which generates this geometric one, it is also um, a module singular in my foliation. So I remember that the same leaf tank decomposition, the same geometric singular foliation can be generated by different modules. So there can be different module singular in singular foliations. And one can ask if, if for any of them, this condition, let me just recall the condition, this condition, which is this one, is satisfied, okay? The, the second question is, if there exists one choice of the singular module singular foliation such that it is satisfied, it's a much more complicated question. So let us go back to these two questions. So the second one is precisely, so again, given a geometric one, singular Riemannian foliation, the question is, does there exist a module singular foliation which induces the geometric one such that it, this is also a module singular Riemannian foliation, satisfying this condition from above, okay? So first of all, if the foliation is regular, the two questions are the same because there's only one uh, singular foliation in that sense, uh, which generates it, and then the answer is yes. Okay, so then a geometric uh, module is the same. So the question is only if we have really uh, leaves of different dimensions, so generically uh, singular, because the, one has to say that the notion how singular foliations and singular Riemannian foliations are introduced, they include regular ones as special case. But in the regular case, these two questions are the same and the answer is yes. However, in, <coughs> in the uh, singular case, the, the first, uh, like the strong version of this equivalence is definitely no. So there's a simple example and I even want to show why. So let's, let, let's go back to this example from above. So we have uh, the manifold is R2. We have the standard metric. And um, let me just look at the time. Yeah. Uh, and now I, um, you see these are just rotations in, in the, in, 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 in the, in, on the plane. So they are generated by such one vector field. It's one dimensional rotations. So let's call this vector field W. And uh, so it, it does generate a module. So it would be like all, all um, vector fields which are proportional to W with some function. So all like F1 is spanned by W and each element in F1 is just W times a function F. And then I can go to this equation. So uh, the one I had before, there were two terms, one where I can put out F but then W acts on G uh, and it's a killing vector. So it's zero. So it's only the second term remaining. And now it's, it's I mean, that was what I explained already before. So evidently this lies inside here because W is the generator of F1. So we are just in, okay. So uh, that's how I explained already before that uh, killing vectors or local killing vectors are always span or generate a single affiliation. However, we can also choose uh, such a module. So I just multiply this W by the function X square plus Y square. So now uh, elements of F2 are all uh, uh, functions uh, of the form fu a function F times W, where F vanishes at least quadratically at the origin, uh, actually proportional to X square, to, proportional to the norm of X square. And now I, I just look at the same calculation here and uh, I see the following. So let's put in this function X square plus Y square, then DF vanishes like to the order X at the origin and um, this W 
Uh, ah, I think uh, this W, sorry, I'm a bit lost. Um, so this W, no, this W, okay, W vanishes linearly, right? So this vanishes quadratically at the origin. Whereas uh, it should, if, it, if it's supposed to lie inside this, I, I remind you, I, I or an observes that this uh, vanishes uh, cubically. So this is uh, the order of x cube. So, uh, that, but that means that at the origin, this omega one uh, cannot be the element in omega one cannot be smooth. So whenever I find something outside the origin which exists because there it's regular, uh, this uh, this element in here needs to be singular at the origin. So it means um, it's just not <clears throat> this F two does not generate uh, a module singular Riemannian foliation. So just, Thomas, yeah. Thomas, didn't we have an example with just R one and the foliation given by I mean, zero and the rest, yeah. and it's okay. the same, right? The, the idea I, is the same. I, I, don't, I don't remember, but could well yeah. be. Yeah. In this paper in 19. Yeah. Could well be, I, I wanted to. Um, Even simpler, but we still have mentions, to, of course. Um, yes. Yeah, to have this singular Riemannian foliation like this. Okay, because the one dimensional, you cannot have a singular Riemannian foliation, right? So I okay, won't... zero, zero, and the rest, but it's not singular. Yeah, that's not a singular Riemannian foliation. It is. Why not? No, it's not a singular Riemannian foliation because uh, the geodesics, uh, the, the geodesics which um, are orthogonal to the origin, are not orthogonal to the rest, right? So this is not an example actually. Not because uh, right, a, 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 any any uh, vector like if you have two leaps in on R, the origin and the rest, then uh, a line passing by the origin is orthogonal to the origin because there are no tangent vectors to the origin, whereas uh, evidently outside it's not orthogonal. So uh, on a line with these two leaps, there are no single Riemannian foliations. Oh man, yeah, but but this is an example which does work. So we had to, we had such an example for something else, but but okay, this is one for single Riemann creation. I, I just summarize it here. So uh, MGF one with the choice uh, of the, the vector fields with the module being generated by the generator of the killing vectors, the killing symmetry. This is a singular Riemannian foliation in the module sense, whereas the other one, um, which is multiplied, where the generator is multiplied by x square plus y square, is not. And they both induce the same uh, geometric singular foliation. So the answer to the first question, therefore, is no. Or I recall. So there were these two questions. Um, so given a general uh, geometric singular Riemannian foliation, uh, then it's not true that whatever is the choice of the module, it's, it's a singular Riemannian foliation in the module sense. You need to specifically choose one model, module. Now the question is, does there exist one? Okay, so in that example, the answer is yes, certainly, right? There is the one with the killing vectors, which, which works. That's the preferred one. So that one is, as we just answered, that one is an MSRF. <coughs> so in that example, the answer would be yes. Sorry, now, now I remember it was in the counter example to uh, singular Riemannian foliations, uh, singular foliations, which cannot be Riemannian, singular Riemannian. <laughs> it was counter example to that, right? Very good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now Q two is more tricky, and I um, I was thinking how many details I give on this. I, I still uh, will want to say something about it, and um, but I will um, uh, if there are questions, I, I postpone it to to afterwards. So we have the following results on this. Uh, so let's take R sixteen and uh, look at the following geometric single affiliation. So in each of the concentric uh, spheres S15, as isomorphic to S15, you take the octonionic hot vibration and you, you, you just scale it uh, down so that, that at the origin you add, the origin is one leaf. So outside of the origin, that is even um, a, a Riemannian submersion. So it will certainly be <coughs> um, uh, outside a, a singular Riemannian foliation, but it turns out that it also including this origin like this, it is 
uh, a geometric single or Riemannian foliation. And I, I should mention Ricardo Mendes, who drew our attention to this, uh, to precisely such a construction. Okay. Um, what we've hardly we showed is that um, there exists a module single or foliation, which induces the uh, the geometric one, so the one which I just defined above, this is the definition above. Um, and uh, it cannot be linear at the origin. Uh, that's uh, because <coughs> this singular uh, Riemannian hop vibration is not generated by isometries and isometries um, would be linear, uh, linearly vanishing at the origin. There are rotations if they keep the origin invariant. Uh, but they cannot be, and uh, so, but it turns out that indeed quadratic ones do. And uh, we also, uh, yeah, okay, that's later what I want to say, but this, the main part is, so we, we, we don't have a general answer if, if we don't have a module single or Riemannian foliation. However, if we restrict to the analytic, uh, real analytic context, we can prove that it's not, it cannot be, there cannot be any analytic generators. So these are even quadratic. These certainly don't, but the question was, is there maybe another one which does? And uh, what we, we were able to prove is in the real analytic case, it's not. And we conjecture that uh, this will also hold true for this infinity case, but um, this can be technically more demanding because one needs to look at vector fields which are flat at the origin. So that, that means that all its derivatives vanish whereas still in the neighborhood it's non zero to generate the same, same leaves and uh, for them we have not been able to prove it. Yet. Um, there's uh, also a remark I want to add. So in this case of this uh, octonionics hop vibration or si singular running hop vibration, uh, we were able to, con con um, uh, for this singular foliation, we were able to uh, construct a Lie algebra with Hardy which produces this quadratic uh, singular foliation on its base. And uh, the structure functions of the Lie brackets are linear in the coordinates of the base. Okay, so that uh, concludes the, the first part. If, if there's any question, I, I'd be happy to, to answer. And otherwise I would, when did I start 11.30? I have a totally stupid question. Like R16, uh, do you have anything in lower dimension that you can like no. draw or, okay. And it's a statement. It's the first it's example just... we have of that sort, yeah. So, but I mean, you... it's not a no-go theorem. It's just like, because there you were lucky. No, 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 it is. Or you can say that in lower for, for it Because you wanted something which is not generated by isometries. Uh -huh. So this is like, the simplest case which we know, which is not generated by isometries or a, a singular one, right? I mean, the, you can also have this uh, locally Riemannian submersions, which are not isometries, but then they have constant dimension. If you want to, uh, the leaves, if you want uh, something of a singular foliation, that's the one we found. Actually, we didn't find it ourselves. We discussed with Ricardo Mendes and he proposed it to us. And okay. um, thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was a good question. So now the second part is about Marita equivalence. So <clears throat> we first uh, review um, the notion uh, which was given by, let me see the names, I'm so bad in names, uh, Garmandia and uh, Zambon, uh, Marco Zambon and his former student Garmandia. Um, they introduced uh, the notion of Hausdorff Marita equivalence. They called it Hausdorff because this is a manifold and it's Hausdorff. And in, in the case of groupoids, sometimes one drops Hausdorff, the condition Hausdorff. So, okay, I, I will in, henceforth in, in the case of singular Riemannian foliation, not add this Hausdorff. But the, the definition is as such. So you are given a manifold N, you have two subjective submersions to your given manifolds M1 and M2, which have the, um, single affiliations F1 and F2 respectively. So they are subjective submersions. As a technical condition, one needs that the fibers of the submersions are connected. Otherwise it's just not the right thing. And uh, then there's one condition, which is that the so-called pullback affiliations agree. So I need to tell you like given uh, such a submersion, how to construct the affiliation on N out of affiliation F1 and um, this, is done 
maybe I do it here. This is done actually by uh, Androlikakis and Skandalis who gave this uh, definition of singular foliations first, but with this compact support. And uh, so suppose you have uh, a submersion and F is a singular foliation on the base, then you say that the pullback foliation is just all the vector fields on the space N upstairs, which project to F. And as, as I said it now, it's not correct. Actually, it's generated by this. So I need to still uh, take the C infinity of N span. So, th so those elements are no more projectable, but they are generated by the projectable vector. Okay, projected, projectable just in the standard sense that at each point you take the tangent map and you land inside uh, this one. <clears throat> and now they have the following theorem. Sorry, yeah. in particular, all vertical vector fields are inside, right? As usual. Absolutely. Because they are pressure. Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. And the condition is that, uh, like, that, that, that's kind of an important thing. So the vertical ones are always inside. But, but there will be different ones in here. And, and that's how you can kind of change uh, F1 and F2 because there's something in the vertical which you can add on both sides such that they only agree. So that's much, uh, much more relaxed than just saying they are isomorphic in one or the other sense. Okay, and uh, one important uh, consequence is that if they are uh, if there are two uh, Morita equivalents or house of Morita equivalent uh, singular foliations, then as topological spaces, their leaf spaces are homeomorphic. So um, as mentioned before, uh, the, 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 the transversal geometry is something for the singular Riemannian foliations, which um, is something which should be preserved, uh, whereas that the one along the leaves is not. and uh, that's why we became interested in, in this notion to extend it for uh, to singular Riemannian foliations. And one of the things one has in this context of singular foliations already is that the singular quotients, so the space of leaves of a singular foliation, which is not a manifold in general, um, if you take Morita lens, then this stays invariant. So this is the same one. The dimension of the leaves can even change. But uh, this one is, is something which is very, they have something more. They have also that like something, if you take a transversal, um, so if you are in a, in a leaf and you take a transversal submanifold, the singular foliation uses there also a singular foliation. And these are diffeomorphic uh, on, or, uh, on the Morita equivalents, but this does not easily generalize to the context of metrics. So I didn't use it here. Now, uh, the definition for uh, Morita equivalent of singular Riemannian foliations. So we say the same thing. So there should be uh, house of Morita equivalent singular foliations. Now we in addition have uh, methods G1 and G2 certainly such that these are singular Riemannian foliations. This can be either in the module sense or in the geometric sense. So it's two definitions at the same time. And uh, on top we are given just um, a metric H. We require that these uh, subjective submersions are Riemannian submersions. So I explained before what Riemannian submersion means, namely that vectors which are orthogonal to the fibers uh, are projected isometrically to the base. And uh, there's another condition uh, which one needs in this context, uh, which is some kind of completeness of N, um, uh, which is needed. So uh, there's, a, we, we call it Erisman completeness. So uh, because you have this metric H here, you can, you can lift vectors from the base uh, uh, to, 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 to the top by requiring them to, do, to project to the one on the base, but on the other hand, to be orthogonal to the fibers. So there's a unique connection, Erisman connection there. And whenever you take a path down there, um, you need to be able to lift it uh, to N uh, horizontally, okay? That, uh, so there are no holes in N, otherwise there would be problems in, in some of the statements and proofs. Uh, important thing is that you don't need to have a singular foliation here as before. So uh, the pullback foliation, either one, because they're the same, uh, automatically imply that this is a singular Riemannian foliation with respect to H, okay? That's a consequence which you proved. Um, now, 
in the case of single Riemannian variation, <coughs> it's not as obvious that this is an equivalence relation. And uh, maybe I should make a remark. Um, it, it may sound strange to even discuss the question of uh, like a proposition or theorem that something's an equivalence relation. However, I, I recall that the Morita equivalence of Poisson manifolds is in general not um, an, an equivalence relation. So it is a, a good question to ask if, if it's true. And the, the crucial point here is the transitivity. And there's some slightly tricky thing going on. So suppose you have like M1 and M2, which are Morita equivalents with respect to U, M2 and M3 are Morita equivalents equivalent with respect to V. Now we need to construct one which make M1 and M3 Morita equivalent. So as a, as a total space N, we just take the fiber product over the space in the center. And now the, the metric is not just the pullback of these metrics or like the, the, stand, the, the natural things, but it needs to subtract something coming from the center. Okay, and then, then it works. So, and we were informed by Zambon, I think that um, uh, Del Hoyo and uh, Fernandez, they used uh, such a metric also in their paper about uh, remaining group weights. We didn't know it, but uh, I want to acknowledge it that, uh, that they found the same thing. Just a related question. Is it true that the Riemannian group poet gives the Marita equivalence for, for the base with itself? I would expect it, but we didn't. With the source and target map, right? Yeah, I would expect it, but we didn't prove it. That sounds very natural, I see. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, what we did prove on the other hand is the following statement. So suppose you have two uh, Marita equivalent singular Riemannian variations. Then uh, the homeomorphism I mentioned before, because they are also how to house of Morita equivalent singular variations of the leaf spaces preserves the distance. So certainly the distance can be also zero, but uh, the distance between two leaves, which is induced by the metric uh, on, 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 as a topological space is, is preserved. So they have isometric, isometric uh, pseudo or the isomorphic pseudo uh, metric spaces. And in particular, if the quotient, the leaf space is smooth, then uh, these are isometric Riemannian manifolds. Okay, so um, it, 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 it does confirm this, this idea that only the geometry transversal to the leaves, uh, which induces a geometry, uh, may, maybe singular geometry uh, on, on the leaf space, is invariant under this notion. So that's the right notion of equivalence. And it's also the notion uh, for, for, for experts in, in, in gauge theories, which one needs uh, in gauge theories um, to, to consider. Uh, and this brings me also back to why we were interested, interested in this question and uh, the question of Vladimir. So <clears throat> um, one calls a singular Riemannian variation homogeneous if F is generated by a, a group action of isometries, so G acting on M by isometries. <coughs> and we learned from Ricardo Mendes that the octonionic uh, geometric singular Riemannian variation on R6 that is not homogeneous. So it cannot be generated by isometries. And we extended his theorem together with Hardy to uh, the more general statement, namely, that it, it cannot be that the, the um, uh, octonionic uh, uh, singular Riemannian foliation in the geometric sense, because it's not in the module sense as we proved at least uh, for the analytic case, uh, cannot be Morita equivalent to a homogeneous one. So that's, that's much more general certainly. So there, there's no manifold MG uh, with F uh, being the orbits of the group action such that they are Morita equivalent. That cannot be, okay? So that uh, ends this part um, about um, the, the Morita equivalence. So these are the two, two main statements. The, the one is that uh, one, one gets uh, also like a distance notion on uh, the leaf space uh, and one has isom uh, is 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 isomorphisms of these uh, leaf spaces also as such. And the second one is that the canonic singular Riemannian foliation is not homogeneous. Morita, I'm sorry, it's not Morita equivalent to a homogeneous one. I have one more question. Just remember in our paper about gauging without symmetries. 
Is it true that if if the two foliations are marital equivalents and that corresponding theories are equivalent? Yes, so that uh, I haven't published this yet, but, it's but it's, you, you checked it, it's true. Yes, yes, so there is some. Okay. So it's, it's, it's a notion makes sense in the I, context I, I, of gauge theory, great. Yeah, precisely. There, there's, I would like at some point to write something about moriticulence of um, sigma models, and it will turn out to be also this notion. Okay, now uh, I start uh, more or less again from zero, but with this inspiration from before. And as I started there yeah, with uh, motivating by the regular foliations in the Frobenius theorem, I want to do the same thing for, uh, uh, for, for these uh, constraint systems or coisotropic submanifolds. So consider a regular coisotropic submanifold C inside a symplectic manifold, then it's coisotropic if and only if its vanishing ideal is a Poisson subalgebra. Okay, that's a possible uh, characterization. So I see is at all those functions which vanish on this C and uh, it, it, it satisfies this condition, okay? And uh, now we define an i Poisson manifold. So this can be a Poisson manifold, doesn't need to be symplectic with some Poisson bracket. And there's an ideal i, uh, which is just a Poisson manifold together with something else. Namely, one has an ideal inside uh, the functions on the Poisson manifold, which is on the one hand locally finitely generated, and on the other hand, it's a Poisson subalgebra. So it, it's very analogous to the single affiliations, which was a submodule locally finitely generated and closed under the Lie bracket, and now it's closed under the Poisson bracket and it's also locally finitely generated as functions. So that's the definition, and uh, now. Um, Important with quasitropic submanifolds is symplectic reduction. And that will be uh, an important point in this context. So because uh, one has this quasitropic condition, um, the, the leaves which are generated by, uh, actually, the, let's say like this, the Hamiltonian vector field generated by functions in the ideal, they are involutive and generate leaves along this submanifold. And in the case that the leaf space is smooth, um, we can look at uh, this reduction map and uh, the, the leaf space then carries a canonical symplectic form. And now, um, so, so this, um, um, the, 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 so this R is for like reduced uh, phase space, if you want. So the functions on this as a Poisson algebra, in fact, they are isomorphic in this case to the normalizer of this ideal model of the ideal. So that's an algebraic reformulation of the same thing. I uh, defined more generally uh, what, what normalizer, what I understand here. I mean, it's just a standard normalizer of a, a Lie algebra. So if one has an I Poisson manifold, then N of I would be all functions H such that the Poisson bracket of H with an element in the ideal lies inside the ideal. So in particular, certainly the ideal is inside its normalizer, but um, the normalizer in general is bigger. So now, um, and uh, right, and the second observation is that <coughs> this is always a Poisson algebra. So this, this isomorphism is in terms of Poisson algebras. Okay. So because here we have this um, bracket here and there's a canonical bracket over there, I will come back to this. So we use this uh, as a motivation for the following definition. First, we call um, R of I, you know, the, the algebra, N of I over I, the reduction of an I Poisson manifold. So this, will, this turns out to be always a Poisson algebra. Yeah, I, actually I mentioned it already here. So this is like not, this is in general. So for any point, I Poisson manifold, this is a Poisson algebra. So we call it the reduction. And uh, if you have given some Hamiltonian, uh, some, some function in the normalizer of I, we call this a dynamical I Poisson manifold and H it's Hamiltonian, okay? So now there's an important proposition, namely if you are given a Hamiltonian H, which is an element in the normalizer, then the flow it generates via its Hamiltonian vector field, preserves the ideal. So one has this 
identity for all times uh, t where it is defined. And it, it may sound like, like trivial, but uh, below we just give a very simple example where one sees that uh, it's a counter example and it, it's very essential that the ideal is finitely generated. I've given a counter example, a very simple counter example uh, of one which doesn't, but a flow uh, of something the normalizer does not preserve the ideal when it is infinitely generated. So just take the cotangent bundle of the real line, look at uh, the ideal J, which is not finitely generated, so I didn't call it I, of functions which vanish uh, on, the, on the positive part of the real line and all its derivatives. So certainly this is an ideal of functions and it's also Poisson algebra because Poisson brackets just take the uh, derivatives. And so you, if it's zero, it's zero. So that uh, satisfies everything from um, an I Poisson manifold except that it's finitely generated. Now take uh, the, the momentum Px. So Px, um, just uh, the Poisson bracket with, for, with any f in j is just a derivative. And uh, since derivatives stay inside j, we stay inside j. So h is in the normalizer of j. But on the other hand, what does this uh, px generate in the flow? Just translation along the, the real line. And then certainly the condition that something vanishes uh, for x big or equal to zero is not invariant on this, right? You just move it to something else. So here it is not at all preserved. Okay, so that's a very simple example, but it shows that uh, that this notion uh, is, is is kind of fine tuned because this is a very important property uh, we want to have. This reminds me of the proof of Hermann of the integrability for singular foliations. He essentially also essentially used it as finitely generated. Otherwise, it doesn't work, right? I see. So it's okay, sim I, very similar. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I I don't know it certainly, but yeah, I can imagine. Mm -hmm. So, so these are the, the, the objects in this category of I Poisson manifolds. Now one can ask, what are the good notions of, uh, of uh, the morphism? Note that uh, the objects were just like adding something to Poisson manifold. The morphism now will be an important relaxation uh, of this. So it will not be just um, Poisson maps with some property. So um, suppose you are given like, a, map, a smooth map from P1 to P2, where these are our I Poisson manifolds. And one thing we want is that the pullback of the ideal I2 is inside the ideal I1, and also the same for the normalizers. That's very natural to ask. And then the, the main condition uh, for uh, a Poisson map would be that this is zero. So if you take functions, um, Okay, normally for all functions on P2, now we require it only for elements in the normalizer. Um, then, uh, th then if I first take the Poisson bracket with respect to two and put it back, it should be the same as if I first pull the functions back and then uh, take the Poisson bracket on, on, the, on, on the space one. So that should be zero if it's a Poisson map. Now this is an important relaxation of this. Um, let us see how it relates. Uh, you should replace I1 uh, instead of N I1 in the third condition. Yeah, 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 absolutely right. Thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> because we should take more, more doubt, right? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Thank you. Okay, so uh, let us see how it relates to to some other things in special cases. Suppose we just take the ideals to be zero. Then, um, then uh, let me put back here. Then this condition is empty, zero license at zero. The normalizer are all functions. Yeah, pullback of functions, line set functions. But then since this is zero, we just get it back at Poisson map. Okay, so if we take the ideals to be zero, we just get back our usual notion of Poisson maps. On the other hand, if we take, um, all the idea to be all functions, then the only thing then all of this is, is, is again, uh, actually also the last condition is always satisfied because it's some function as um, on, on P1. So uh, we get just any smooth map. And that makes sense because the, the logic here is that 
only the reductions are something which should which should carry some uh, important information. So if I re reduce uh, all functions by all functions, then certainly there's nothing left. We just have that smooth map. And uh, an important fact is now the following, namely that this definition is optimal to ensure that the pullback F star descends to a map on the reductions of the Poisson algebras. So I recall that R, did I recall it? No, that R was, <clears throat> let me go back just to remember, R was this normalizer divided by the ideal. Remember that the first condition was that the, uh, the pullback maps the ideal into the ideal, the second condition, the normalizer into the normalizer. Uh, and then uh, also the quotients uh, go inside the quotients by the pullback. So the pullback descends to such a map. And, uh, and now this last condition, in, because now in the quotient this becomes zero and shows precisely that this becomes a Poisson map uh, on the Poisson algebras. Okay, so that's an important point. So this is precisely the notion one needs in the in the case of um, maps between uh, constraint systems. So now the last part of my talk. So we want to use this machinery to apply it to the first two parts of, of this talk. So. <coughs> Let uh, MF be a singular foliation. And now I want to, to show that actually this gives rise to an Ipersom manifold in the following way on, on the cotangent bundle. Uh, so the singular foliations are a submodule of the vector field. So I wrote the vector field and local coordinates here. Now, sections on a tangent bundle can be viewed as fiber linear functions on the dual bundle, T star M which lie inside the functions of t star m. t star m certainly is a Poisson manifold. I just wrote also what uh, this function is. So you just replace d by dx i by p i. And that's certainly a function on the phase space x and p. And um, now you can look at the ideal generated by, uh, by these linear functions here. Uh, on, 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 on the whole Poisson manifold, let's call it IF. It's naturally associated to F. And uh, because we have this uh, isomorphism of Lie algebras of Poisson brackets uh, between fiber linear functions and the Lie bracket of the corresponding vector fields, this is easily seen to be uh, a Poisson subalgebra. So this is a Poisson, I Poisson manifold. It was a locally finitely generated because this was locally finitely generated. One can even say more if one wants, one can say that uh, any fiber linearly generated uh, um, Ipersom manifold on T star M comes from a single affiliation on M, if one wants. Second, let <coughs> HG be the Hamiltonian of a metric G on M. So in, in, in the usual coordinate expressions like, like this, where gij upper indices is the inverse of g. And then one has the following observation, namely that um, a singular Riemannian foliation in this module sense is equivalent to saying that this Hamiltonian is precisely in the normalizer of i. Actually, that is a nice um, alternative way of uh, defining um, uh, singular Riemannian foliations in the module sense. It's just saying that this natural Hamiltonian should be in this natural space. Um, we had something similar. Again, we didn't have the vocabulary uh, in our work with Noyaki Keda at the time, and we improved it considerably with Hardy, but the, the spirit of this observation was already mentioned there. So why I wanted to attribute it to our old work. So now let us apply this to, to two contexts. The one I already announced, namely uh, this fact that a module singular Riemannian foliation induces a geometric one can now be uh, done in a very geometric and um, almost tautological fashion. So first one observes, when the, it's, it's a standard fact, everybody uh, who worked in dynamical systems knows that the Hamiltonian uh, of a metric uh, generates um, 
the geodesics of the metric G on its base by the Hamiltonian flow. So that's the geodesics coming into the game. Maybe I should recall what geometric singular Riemannian foliation means. It means that uh, every geodesic which is orthogonal to a leaf at one point is orthogonal to the leaf, to all leaves uh, along, its, uh, along itself or along the, the, the flow uh, of the geodesic. Um, now, so there, there are the geodesics coming into the game because this Hamiltonian uh, uh, generates precisely uh, geodesics. Then let us look at uh, the generalization of the quasi-tropic submanifold to the singular setting. So given any ideal I, I can in general look at its vanishing ideal. Uh, it, sorry, it's vanishing subspace. So in, 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 the, in the concrete case here, so uh, C is those points in T star M such that um, the generators vanish uh, at it so that uh, VI of X PI is zero. That lies certainly in T star M. And what does it mean actually? It means that this is for all V in the, in the, in the single affiliation. So it means that if I go to a particular point X in M and I look at this space, so these elements are co-vectors which precisely annihilate uh, the singular foliation at that point. They have ever, ever, ever evaluated at that point for so this subspace of the tangent bound. Now uh, we are almost there, uh, namely using the metric to identify T star and with TM, the annihilator is nothing but precisely vectors which are orthogonal to fx. So these are the two ingredients. We have the geodesics. Now we have vectors orthogonal to fx. We now just need to put it together. How do we do it? Uh, we observe that the Hamiltonian flow preserves the ideal. But if it preserves the ideal, which we proved before, right? There was very important that it's finitely generated there. Then it also preserves its uh, vanishing set. And so it means precisely that. So if you start at a point which, when you're inside C, uh, that means that you have a vector, uh, vector which is orthogonal to F, that along the geodesic, you stay inside C. So you stay always orthogonal to the single affiliation. Okay, so this is a very uh, nice proof, I think. And it's one of the application of these um, techniques. And uh, the second one is going back to the Morita equivalence, the second part of our talk we have today. Uh, so there's the following theorem. Uh, if you have two Morita equivalent singular affiliations, actually you don't need singular Riemannian as a wrote in the abstract, it's just singular affiliations is fine. Then their reductions are isomorphic. Okay, so that's uh, an algebra, because these are algebras, that's an algebraic invariance. It can be compared with this uh, isotropy, the infinity algebras one obtains in, uh, from this, uh, the infinity algebraids uh, with Camille and Sylvain Uh And uh, in, in, in proving this, <coughs> um, uh, there's, uh, I want just one, 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 when last transparency is, is about one remark, how one um, proves this. Uh, no, not how one proves it, but what is needed in, in, inside the proof. So you remember uh, in the Morita equivalence, we had um, uh, Riemannian submersions in the game, or so sorry, if, if it's single operations, only submersions in the game. So whenever you have such a submersion, we can always choose metrics on M and N such that they become Riemannian submersions. That's always possible. And uh, choose these uh, two metrics uh, in such a way, in such a compatible way, then the tangent map induces a map between the cotangent bounds in a canonical way. I mean, canonical after the choice of these metrics. And now uh, we proved with Hardy that um, this is an I Poisson map with respect to the ideal. Uh, I mean, on, on, on the following uh, ideals, on T star M, we take just the one induced by the single affiliation F. And uh, on N, we take the pullback affiliation, which exists as I explained earlier in the talk. It also generates an ideal on M. And now we have two I Poisson manifolds. They have symplectic forms and Poisson brackets, therefore, and they have these ideals. 
and this map is i poisson and um the last remark so this map pi pi is strictly poisson only under a particular geometric condition namely i mentioned before that whenever you have um such a Riemannian submersion you can lift vectors horizontally to from m to n and uh, this is a poisson map pi pi is a poisson map if and only if this is a flat connection a flat erasman connection or in other words the horizontal distribution is involved okay so this this was actually an important point for inventing these i poisson manifolds because uh, we first conjectured uh, that it would be a Poisson map, but then found out this is only under some conditions a Poisson map, but needs something more general. And these were these I Poisson maps. And with this, I, I conclude. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas, very much. So, uh, questions? Valodia? Well, I'm fine. I asked my. Yeah, right. Uh, I have maybe maybe very naive one. So suppose we have a symplectic manifold and some Lie algebra acting uh, by symplectic infinitesimal symplectic morphisms. Then there is Poisson map. Uh, yeah, the, the, there is the moment map. moment, moment map. Uh, is it an example of I Poisson? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah because uh, Marsden Weinstein is probably an example of your construction. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. But, uh, how is it? Uh, what happens if we have two equivalent I Poisson for these sort of things? Do we have some equivalence of uh, of the actions of the symplectic actions or of the algebraids? Or you mean if they are more equivalent or what? Yes. Uh, yeah, if they if they uh, I Poisson equivalent, I mean uh... I Poisson equivalent. Yeah, yes. um, yeah. I think that uh... is it is it the Marit equivalence of the underlying algebraids, symplectic sort of symplectic algebraids or what? Uh... We didn't we didn't go into this, um, uh -huh. but certainly one would expect such type of results, right? So yeah. Uh, it can be much more general. It, it can, can be, be more general than just a symplectic action of a Lie algebra, of course. But it's as an example. But yeah, there, there should be such examples, mm -hmm. absolutely, and one should study such examples under, under which condition, yeah. at least, it is true. Mm -hmm. I, I imagine that uh, the, these reductions are the, contain more or less all informations which are yeah, it looks like this, right? And um, mm -hmm. because you you related this to your Marita equivalence, it would be also yeah. reasonable to relate to, relate to Marita equivalence of algebraids. Uh, of right. this sort, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Other questions? Hadi? Uh, <laughs> sorry, I have a question. Oh, yeah. I... Uh, uh, hi, like, Thomas. Yes. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned the, uh, the constraint Hamilton system as an example. But uh, for example, the, uh, the, the nonlinear sigma with a sigma model with the reagible structure is another example you are system right uh, yeah i mean the, the, you have the, a six, the system, system is like a zero plus one dimensional gauge theory so there's a yeah. very related story um very related stories for sigma models with gauge symmetry uh in that context however one needs to uh, add additional conditions on the merit equivalence of the target data so if one has a d-dimensional source manifold, then one will need to require that um, the fibers of the um, of the submersions are uh, deconnected. So one will mm -hmm. need to require that there are no um, non-trivial maps from the source inside the fibers of these submersions. Then then one can prove um, equivalence of the gauge theories in. In the standard setting, I mean that these quotients are usually always singular, but then one should make some things like like here with this algebras and can make such statements that uh, this the space of uh, 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 gauge inequivalent um, uh, the, 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 sorry the, the the gauge invariant content is 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 preserved by Marit equivalence. But it, it's a slight and strengthened condition. So when it's not sufficient to require only that the fibers are connected, uh, which happens in the zero plus one dimensional case, but one needs, um, mm -hmm. one needs um, some, some more conditions on the connectedness of the fibers. Do, do, we, do we need the uh, 
modification a modification if we introduce uh, uh, three form three form or two form deformation do we okay. want do we yeah, need I think, one? yeah okay i i should be okay. more specific so what i was talking about was uh the gauge theories of the standard sigma model uh without any addition so if you have just um if you have a module single very manipulation then you can construct uh, a gauge theory uh if you have in addition a source manifold a d-dimensional source manifold with a pseudo money metric on it you can construct such an action functional and that was the motivation of alexei and me to to actually find this this module singular manipulation so these were precisely the conditions you needed to make a gauge theory generalizing killing vectors and for those gauge theories um uh one can show that the Morita equivalence in that somewhat strengthened sense uh implies um equivalence of sigma models on the uh, level of uh, gauge invariance uh, information. Uh, if you extend the sigma model, uh, it's it's still an open territory, and uh, certainly one expects that the correct definition of Morita equivalence of those data will give uh, Morita will give equivalence of physics. But uh, yeah, yeah, sure. suffice it to be explored, and one of our ideas is also to to extend it already to this uh, curved young mill six series. Where you do not only have a single Riemannian foliation, yes. but over it quadratic Lie algebra or Lie group, Riemannian group or it. It's and, not clear what is the merit equivalence of Cartan Lie algebra, for instance. Yeah, I don't, and know. It, I don't it, know myself. But, yeah. But but it should follow more or less from these uh, ideas. Unless it's too, it's too restrictive, of course. Uh, yes, uh, that, yeah, let me you. ask. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, let me ask maybe the final question, which I normally ask to, to people here. Uh, so, what are the open questions in this theory which you which is okay safe to be mentioned which you can mention as an expert yes okay so um one important thing is that uh actually in in improving this i mentioned already a little bit here namely uh if i have a submersion then i get an ipoisson map um and uh actually this ipoisson manifold so you really define this category uh, and um, if if on the level of uh, singular foliations, I restrict to submersions, one can show that this the, actually one gets a functor for every choice of, of such compatible metrics. So suppose you have singular Riemannian foliations, then mm -hmm. you do have such a functor. Um, but uh, one would like to extend it to um, like, like a real functor on, on the category of singular affiliations. And for that, one needs a good notion of more uh -huh. reasons of singular affiliations. And um, Marit equivalence is not a good morphism, yes, you think? No, it's also, it's another type. A kind of, of yes, kind of. But uh, like, you know, right? Uh, <laughs> like, uh, I mean, Marit, for example, Marit equivalence of symplectic manifolds is more or less. Uh, just the connected components of the symplectic manifold or something. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, okay. uh, there, there are different notions. One sometimes needs also like more uh, data, mm -hmm. uh, like a symplectomorphism or something. Yes, to be so, preserved, yes. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a sim similar thing here. We would like to know, for example, some notion of a morphism of singular affiliations such that if you have two Lie algebroids uh, giving rise to the singular affiliations, then can you lift it to, to this one? Mm -hmm. That may be even not true, but uh, at least what one wants is that uh, any local morphism, uh, I mean, any morphism between singular affiliations um, can be lifted to Lee infinity algebraic morphism mm -hmm. uh, around the universal ones and around each mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. Local it's finally generated, so then we can apply this. Mm -hmm. Uh, theorem of Camille and uh, Sylvain and myself uh, and construct the infinity algebraids. So a good notion of morphism should have the property because these are universally attached to single affiliations that such a morphism can be lifted to that type of morphism. Okay, we can define such a morphism in such a way, right? That it no, comes it, from NQ. It depends. I mean, you don't want yeah. like a Lee infinity algebra morphism has like infinitely many data. Mm -hmm. So you want to show that like some simple condition or some two, three simple conditions give rise to the existence of all yeah. the correct choice up there yeah the left and, and right hand sides not, not then, only the right hand side is, yes. then the question is what do you need to define this functor more generally 
uh, from from um, uh, singular foliations or singular Riemannian foliations to to iposomal effects. So it certainly should be more general than just restricted submersions, but maybe not not any any maybe it's defined only on, on some subcategory. Uh, Thomas, I have very elementary question. Yes. Yes. Uh, you see that, uh, of course, I have the also a lot of the examples of singular foliation in my mind, and I want to try to construct some uh, invariant here yeah, because then I have the uh, invariant of the uh, structure I am interested in. But the condition for apply uh, uh, theory at least that's a finitely generated module, right? So you have a singular foliation, and uh, how you check that is a uh, fit to finitely generated. How does one check it? Yeah. Yeah, it depends on the context. Uh, but I mean, the definition is such that around each point, there is a neighborhood yeah. such that, and there is a, a finite number of vector fields such yeah. that any vector field in the module restricted to that neighborhood can be written as a, a linear combination of those vector fields where linear is C infinity linear. So with, with respect to functions okay. uh, as coefficients. So locally this exists, uh, but it, it can be that the number of uh, local generators changes and actually it can be such that uh, around uh, a point it, it going to infinity say, like I said, so you can look at examples like you have um, like along you in R2 and along the, the integers along the real line, you need more and more generators around each point. So uh, it's not globally finitely generated, but only locally. So these, these kind of things. And uh, I'm also not an expert in this, but then there are these examples like take all vector fields on R, which vanish on uh, the negative line, uh, then uh, this is not finitely generated. Yeah, so, so you have a lot of the interesting examples, right? We have some examples, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. So I said, uh, so check maybe, yes. Yeah, in this paper uh, yeah, with, okay. with, with Camille and, and, and uh, Sylvain Labo, uh, we have uh, several examples, yes. Okay, if there are no questions, uh, then let me thank the speaker again for, for the interesting talk. Yeah, so. pleasure.